Well, hello there, all you cool cats and kittens. For all the nerds that watch my shorts in the bet you can't guess the year making model. Ah, uh, any guesses now? All right, it's a 1950 Buick Roadmaster because it's got the four. That's a special or a super Roadmaster. Uh, she got a boo boo, but comes with the door and another fender. Luckily, these unbolt, unlike new cars. So I'm probably in the sake of saving the patina because the new fender is uh, like primer gray from the factory. So in the sake of saving the patina, boy, that's deep. But um, whew, let's see. Yeah, she's she's a couple knuckles deep, bro. Um, in the sake of saving the patina, though, I'm gonna I'm going to at least try to hammer and dolly that out. And I think it'll make the, you know, it'll, it'll bare metal this in the process of beating the fuck out of it on a, like a leather pad and just work it until it's out and then shape it, make it look like the other side or the new one. At least I have the new one to kind of feel and I can compare to. And then I'll have the replacement door in as well so I can, you know, put the fender up here and be like, ah, oh, yeah. And then up here, just a little, I'll fill that in and then tap it out and fill it in and tap it out and fill it in. Luckily, this window is good because that one's not. It's got a permanent air conditioning, which sucks because uh, that would be perfect. If that one was busted, then I could just swap the door and not care. But now I got to gut it and gut it. I'm also going to have to uh, cut all of that out probably because, oh, Bob's your uncle, there we go, because that, that, that is as far as I can open it, and ugh, if you know anything about these old cars, uh, here's the hinge. So, as you can see, I've got to be able to get straight at that thing, which means this door has got to be out 90 degrees just to get at the hinges. I don't want to say it's hitting in here. But luckily, the guy I got it from had the little... Hard to see there, but the screws are there. And then there's a trim piece that goes here that matches this guy. So I have that, uh, and then, well, what about the crazy, let me show you. Oh, I still got that guy, I gotta finish. Um, this, yeah, here's that, that little piece I was talking about. So I have that for the other side, and then you're like, well, what about this piece? Cause that, you'll never find another one of those. Uh oh, wonder if I have that piece, but I do have this piece, he included it, just don't, think I have that piece I don't know I'll check and I don't know I don't think I have that piece or that piece for the other side because it got sheared off but I can probably find those those would probably be easier to find than that crazy shit and then let's see the interior is way too gone the doors though oh like Oh my God. Um, interior's toast, floorboard's toast, headliner toast, dash needs to be defunct. Got this really awesome, got, I'm gonna call it a bullet hole. Looks like somebody threw a rock at it with a lawnmower or something. Probably yeeted a boulder at it with the lawnmower. It's a permanent AC on that one, but I'm probably going to uh, put some clear tape over the back a little resin con carne and then tape the front and then UV light it with that kind of resin. 
and then that'll seal it and I can peel the tape off and it'll look like glass. And then it's got the cool flip outs, like the Chevy with the actual handle, not push out. You gotta unlock it and then, and then there's also back here too, which I thought was neat. I didn't know on the four door that those flipped out, but that's pretty cool. And then an extra grill piece mustache that's broken in half because I guess he ordered this one online and it came broken half because the one up front, just the end is broke off. So I may braise this one together. Headlight bucket for that front passenger that got hit. I think I may pull these out, pad them up with some like temper foam over burlap and then just hog ring a bunch of uh, Mexican blanket to it. Or I always liked when the car is, all right, that one doesn't shut as good, I need some oil. I like when the car is ratty as fuck on the outside and then the interior is like brand new fucking mint. So I saw a guy at a show and I mean, as soon as I got right about here, hand on the, the, the window seal and uh, got my head about here I could smell it instantly and I mean the nostalgia the waves of memories that rushed over me because he had done the seats in baseball glove leather so it was a little thicker than normal upholstery leather so it didn't have as much like give to it it's more of that firm like glove leather and then the oils that they use in it like the smell the look the texture the way it felt uh, I'm sure though that would be thousands of dollars especially as big as these seats are and they're not you know they're not simple it's a bottom and a top and a back and then same thing back there it's like the front whole thing and then the seat and then the back and then the top and I don't know. So I may do it ghetto for now. Radio, big old dash on it. Gotta figure out what to do with that. Headliner, I'll probably just rip out and then maybe like line it. Let me see if I can get the hood open with one hand. Oh, I just noticed that. Bummer, whatever. I'm trying to there we go. I'm trying to actually keep one, and the only way I think I'm going to keep one is if I have one nobody wants, and that I do it ah, my way instead of the way I think someone else. Oh, come on. Of course, I open it from this side, and I can't get it. Oh, she's a heavy bitch. Um, I always make them the way I think somebody else would want them so that someone else will buy them. But if I do this one, oh, oh, there went my screwdriver. If I do this one the way I want it, I think no one else will want it and I'll be able to keep it. One more time. All right. So there's like a kickstand that can go either way. And it was stuck. So this hood will open from this side if you pull the lever on this side, which pops this guy and this guy at the same time. However, if this is latched, this guy works like a hinge. And uh, the whole hood can flip this way too if I pull the lever over there, which actuates the exact same mechanism, but mirrored oil bath air cleaner so there's supposed to be anyway i don't know if you can see it it's usually written on the side here somewhere oil line oil level so you're supposed to put like people use dirty used oil they recommend new oil but you just take your oil change and then let it sit for a while so all the sediment hits the bottom and scoop a cup out the top and you top this up so air is getting sucked see it keeps water from going in and getting over the lip basically but air gets sucked in and down and then like a bong it goes into the oil and bubbles through the oil 
so that any sediment in the air obviously gets caught in the oil and sinks down to the bottom and then you can drain it out. Um, so then the air goes under that lip and then back up free of sediment. And then inside here, there's like a steel wool encased, like it almost looks like a cake pan, like those donut shaped, what do they call it? Pound cake, round cake, whatever. So it goes up through that steel wool into here, over to here. I don't think there's anything in there that's more like a moisture catch. So any water or oil is gonna fall down into the bottom and then the air is gonna continue over and then goes into a bunch of holes right above the carbonator. And that's the air reciprocator. You know what I'm talking about. So a lot of stuff I gotta do here, like this guy set to open up with temperature so that hot exhaust gas blows on the bottom of the carburetor when you start up in cold weather. So this heats up quick and then we'll run efficiently and idle when it's really cold out. And then as it, just like the choke, as it warms up, this will close. So these tend to stick open or closed. I may need to look at that. Uh-oh, about 12 minute long video already. That's the heater. There's supposed to be some ducting there that motor blows into that guy which has a heater coil in it which blows to the defrost only and then there's hoses that go down underneath to a blower and heater core under the front seat that then blows hot air onto the front and rear feet board footboard foots of the passengers you know what i'm talking about it's all six volt everything still works i drove it off the trailer onto the garage you know what i mean um, oil filter is in there. So oil comes in, gets bathed through like a regular canister filter, like in the new Beamers and whatnot. And then comes out the other side, goes through the block. Yeah, a lot of work to do. Need to get some measurements on how high we are from the center to the bottom of the fender and then from the ground to the rocker. And then I'm gonna get her in the air. I got a trans leak, it's probably the torque ball. Uh, I gotta figure that out. And then I also need to figure out, I think I see some gas leaking it maybe from the top of the tank. I'm gonna get under there, I'm gonna get everything sorted out underneath, order some parts, maybe a carb rebuild kit, and cut the coils at least. Get this thing down low, cause it's like, that's probably a foot under the rocker right now you know stock ride height but cut the coil front and rear because it's got coils in the front and the back but drums in the front and the back and then those weird like oil filled stabilizers that let's see if i can see it from here yeah like that guy right there so it's like a, a fluid and a bunch of like valving and whatnot and there's an arm that's connected to the control arm so it like moves up and down like a shock and the fluid moving inside of it slows down the bounce and so i got those front and rear springs front and rear i'm gonna cut a coil see where that sits it probably and then go from there i don't want it too low but i don't want it you know like that so yeah new project in the works gonna be dicking with this guy for quite a while and uh, I'll probably drive it as is until something catastrophic happens knock on wood um, and then swap it to something either swap swap it or a complete body swap depending on how uh, how rusty everything is down there I've already you know they've already put patch panels in it so I know there's holes in the floor but if the whole whole floor pans eat up and it's getting into the firewall and all that, it'd be easier for me to just cut the whole floor pan out, take the whole body off, and then drop it onto a Lexus LS430. Or my other thought was a 2005 Duramax extended cab Chevy Silverado that's been hitting the side or the rear and then slam it, take the body off the frame, put this body on that frame, and then have push button, all wheel drive, crazy torque, turbo, diesel, Allison transmission, unstoppable, unbreakable. I'd have to have slicks on all four corners, but 
I'm leaning towards that idea. I don't know. Comment below what you think. I really don't care, but I'll do what I want. So yeah, carb, trans leak, we'll get it driving. I've got the digital manual so I can start from the top to the bottom and do all the, the maintenance and the points and the, you know, get everything to spec, drive it, beat on it, see what happens. All right. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, keep on modding.